Hello and welcome, my disgustingly cute bipedals. Welcome to another episode of Myth Busting with Super John Bombo. Today, we're trying to bust a myth on banana farms are all equal, or banks are really the best, or what? We like the top path? But no, the top path's actually the best because it gives us lives. What the heck do banana farms mean? And the very first step to understanding banana farms is understanding how much money they make per round. This is very easy for most of the top paths and the bottom path banana farms. They all kind of just make sense. But for the middle path banana farms, it gets really funky. And it's kind of complicated, but we're still going to figure it out together. So the easiest way to understand how much money you make is just by sending out a round. You're going to make a bunch of cash kind of all over the place here. You got to make sure you pick it up. And then what you could do is you could look at the amount of money made from that banana farm. So if we look at every single banana farm here, you're going to see a certain amount of money made. So what I decided to do, I decided to get most of the common banana farms in this game and see how much money we made from these guys. Now before I get to banks, if you guys want to smush, smush it all creamy like, smush that like button for me because this does take a long time to make and it's very time consuming and problematic. But hopefully you guys will enjoy the conclusion in the end. Now we need to talk about banks. And banks are really goof-tastic. Alright, because it's really hard to tell how much money you're making because there's different ways to do it. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to get one banana farm of each of these three types. For now, a 030, a 230, and a 032, just in case this magically affects something somehow. And all I want to do is I want to send out as many rounds as it takes to max out my monies. All right, so we're going to send it out two, three, four, five, six. Six times we're going to see how much money we've made already. Uh, ooh, so guess what? Banks don't work in uh, sandbox mode. So now we have to do something a little bit different here. And I want to explain what I'm doing so you don't just take my numbers at uh, a random fact-checking basis. I want to make sure that this makes sense to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to be getting a three of the main types of banks. We're going to be getting uh, monkey banks... Uh, plain monkey bank with top path and a monkey bank with the bottom path. In addition, though, we want to be testing out whether or not the monkey knowledge upgrade for the monkey banks makes sense. So I have a feeling, and I'm not, I don't have not tested this yet, that a 2-3 monkey bank will be the best monkey bank for us. So I'm going to be doing this test with that monkey bank. All I want to see is doing it as perfect as I can. Is this going to make sense here? So we're going to buy... Uh, let's see, how much money can I get here? Uh, let's buy two monkey banks, and we're going to deposit forty-seven fifty into one, and for the other one, we're going to deposit, uh, two deposits worth, and I'm going to see if I collect them at a regular-ish basis, how will this go down? So again, just to reiterate, we cannot see how much money this bank has officially quote-unquote made yet. All we can see is how much money we can actually officially collect. But if you guys don't know how banks work, they make interest. And the better way to play the game is to put money in the bank and let it collect more interest. And then once it's full, you collect that money back. So if we do just one deposit of our full amount of money, we're going to be at 5100 We already made $600 off of our bank. For example, the exact same bank has only made $357. So that interest is going to play into the game for sure. This bank... I think we put like something like 6750 in here, so we made about $700 back off of this bank in one single round. That's a lot of money right there. But of course, we're investing it. We've got to get it back at some point. So at the end of two rounds, we have $8,960 here, and it could be possible for us to just collect that money and go. And I'm going to write this number down. Because after three rounds, we ended up making the max that this bank can hold, which is 9500 But we only made $540 since the last round. That means our, our full interest didn't actually get taken into consideration here. So we still have to write that number down, though. After three rounds, the total amount of money not made but gotten is $9,500. We've made $2,375 from this bank after three solid rounds. After five rounds with a 2-3 banana far, banana bank here, we've made $4,750, but I had to keep in mind how much money I made after only four rounds, because maybe it's more efficient to do that, because we're wasting money by waiting until the end of the round. That being said, 
Let's continue on with our main three banks. This is not even close to the end of the story. This is the very, very, very beginning, but this is kind of how we have to start this off. How much money do these banana farms make per round? We start off with the top paths, and we notice that they make an increasing amount of money as time goes on. Uh, we don't know the efficiency yet, but we do know that obviously the higher you upgrade them, the more money they make. Same thing with the middle paths. We've noticed that the more money you spend, the more money you tend to make in most situations. By the way, the X just means zero here. As far as the bottom paths go, this is where it gets really funky and really fresh. Okay, it's gonna be extra fresh here. A base zero three is gonna make 678 per round. All right, on average. If you go the entire 12 rounds, or 14 rounds that it takes to make that money. The 2-3 takes makes 791 per round if you go the entire 12 rounds that it takes to make that amount of money. Same thing with the, the 0 3 zero. but then here's where it gets interesting. The 2 3 zero with one deposit, just one, that's the W1, with one deposit ends up making $1,063 if, only if, you take the money out. All right? within four rounds, not five rounds. I was telling you guys about that earlier, that it's gonna be weird because you're kind of overshooting the 9,500 9, that you can accept. So the uh, one deposit taking out after four rounds is gonna make you 1,063 per round, whereas the $950 is taking out after five rounds. Still more efficient than the regular two through banana farm starting with zero dollars, but it gets weird because you do have to take it out and put it in, take it out and put it in more often, and let's just say, I'm really good at that usually in real life, but when it comes to banana farms and banana banks, I'm not quite as good at doing that, and I could easily mess things up. As far as the bottom path with two, excuse me, the middle path bank with two, uh, uh, two donations, one deposit, two deposits, then after two rounds, you're gonna be making $917 on average per round, and after three rounds, you're only going to make 791 on average. So actually, it's better to use just one deposit of $4,750, ride it out for two rounds, and that's going to be the most efficient banana farm that you can use if you're willing to every two rounds, uh, excuse me, every four rounds, take it out, put it back in, take it out, and put it back in. And for a lot of people, you might not be too good at that, okay? It takes a lot of practice, a lot of effort, and a lot of times it takes two people. So, um... We gotta move on, though. Alrighty, boys. Now, I've done this a really, really long time ago. But I wanted to make sure that I redid it, just in case the numbers, by any means, changed at all. Because I know there's a lot of buffs, a lot of derfs, a lot of changes to this game. And I think it's finally time that we get this down pat. Pat Fusty style? Yeah. Alright, so. Now you're gonna notice a new set of numbers here. What we did was we ended up sa saying that the uh, first row column, excuse me, the first column is going to be the type of banana farm. The second column is going to be how much money that thing made per round on average. The third column is going to be how much that tower costs. So that means the fourth column is the really important column. It's how efficient that banana farm is. And what you've got to know is that the lower it is, the better it is. So, what this means, as ridiculous as this is, is that the top path banana farms and the bottom path banana farms are pretty similar overall. But, believe it or not, bottom paths seem to be a little bit better. Uh, especially the 0, 2, 3 banana farm kind of took the cake with this one at 14.7. Nice! And then the banks ended up taking the freaking cake out of the park. Holy crap over here, dude. The best banana farm by far was a 2, 3, 0 banana farm with one deposit. So we ended up with seven efficiency that's about more than two times as good as some of the other banana farms over here. That is ridiculous. More than two times as efficient. But of course they take some work. Now this is not the end of the story because even though banks technically are the most efficient, it's not exactly easy to throw down a bank and actually get that money to flop out. So now we need to do some real life experiment tests. So the way these tests are going to work is going to be a little bit weird. The main thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to spend as much money as I can, building my banana farms as soon as I can, earning money from these banana farms, and upgrading them to the way that they were, quote-unquote, most efficient. Which seemed to be, at least for top paths, a 2-0 banana farm into a third tier into a 3-2 banana farm. 
Then I'm going to eventually upgrade it to a 4-2. But at the same time, I'm going to just use my best judgment on when I want to save up money instead of just spending money on upgrading or decreasing my amount of banana farms. All right, guys, I got two numbers here for you. I kind of wasn't able to show you because I was an idiot and sold things. But what I did was I took the entire number of generated cash of our banana farms, and we got 120,520, including all banana farms. We had about 5,000 hours left over, so what I did was I decided to say, you know what, let's sell everything. And the total sold amount of money that I had was 131,266. I know this doesn't add up because I built crappy banana farms to show you guys what I did. So we... Uh, now we need to do this with the bottom half of our farms and see how much money we're going to make with those guys. Up until round 60. So really quick, I just want to talk about something. I actually believe that the numbers or the efficiencies are a little bit misleading. For example, people think that banks, based on the numbers that you read, are automatically 100% by far the best. And that the marketplace... Even though the numbers are a little bit lower than the top path means that the marketplace is automatically better than the top path. But I would actually argue that the main issue with all of this is actually getting the marketplaces going. So, what I want to do is I don't want to save up all the way up into a marketplace here. What I'm doing now is actually, I believe, the wrong play to make. Instead, instead of just jumping into this guy, I want to build a bunch of zero-tier banana farms. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that and use a farmer in addition. So just so you understand, now that I have five banana farms built, now I will start to upgrade my bottom path into marketplaces. And as soon as I get a marketplace, I will be buying the middle path upgrade in addition to that because that is the most efficient marketplace to get. So it should be noted that so far, we are about $2,000 less with this strategy than we are with the top path, even though this is supposed to be more efficient. And that's because getting to that first marketplace all the way up to $3,000 is expensive and difficult to do. Holy crap, Nuggets. Look at this. We got 120245 That is only $300 less than the top path banana farms. And after we sell everything, we get actually a higher number by about $800. Uh, very, very, very close between the top path and the bottom path, as far as my current test is concerned, up until round 60. And now, my friends, for the final test, the very, very difficult test that I will be taking much slower than the other ones, once I finally actually get going in here. We'll be doing the same strategy, where we start off with a couple zero, zero, zero banana farms before we start to jump into the banks, because the banks are just so gosh darn expensive. Now, I have a lot of uh, people, I have a lot of people, I have, a, I have a strong feeling that I think that what a lot of people are thinking is that this is going to blow the other ones out of the water. There's going to be no chance whatsoever. Banks will absolutely dominate. But we'll let the numbers speak for themselves at the end because my pre-thought is that that will not be the case. And in fact, we will be having a very interesting situation on our hands here. All right, and the first monkey bake is going to go up at round 26. I will be getting the increased production and the other upgrade as fast as I possibly can. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be depositing my... Well, I should probably... I don't know. Do I deposit or do I do this? That's honestly a very interesting question. I think i got to get the increased production first before I start depositing my money. And greater production because I have to make that money no matter what. Our first collection from this bank will be on round 36. And this is where things are going to start to get interesting. Now we're going to buy extra monkey banks up the wazizzle non-stop for a little while again like we're to the best of my ability but maybe not 100 percent perfect at the same time because i'm also going to try to deposit into these banks so i can make some money back as well so i was luckily able to get all of my banana farms on the same wavelength here and it should end up working out pretty well to be basically maxing out at about round 60 here so we're going to see if we can make this work out well for us how Diggity dog, it's time to collect all, baby. Boom! There it is. And if we look at the numbers at the end, we're going to add them all up and see how much money we made here, and then we're going to sell them and see where we're at. All right, boys, this isn't the full conclusion. This is only part of the conclusion, and that's why, again, if you want to press that like button for me, pretty please, this is so painful. This is so much work. I'm already two and a half hours deep into making this video right now. And I want to do a good job for you guys, and I want to follow through for you. So let's continue on here. 
what you need to know about the numbers here is only the very middle part of the game here. Again, just to reiterate, that 20,492, that's how much money we made by round 40. Comparatively, the bottom path banana farms made 18,386, and the bottom path only made 9,500 by round 40, but that's a little bit of a false answer because it's only the amount of money that we made, not the true amount of money that we actually produced that was still inside of the bank. But the real number that I think is really important here is that at round 60, how much money did we make trying to make as much money as we can? And with the top path banana farms, we made 120,520. With the bottom path banana farms, we made 120,245. So similar. And for the banks, and only banks third tiers, not fourth tiers or anything else, we made 139,292. Which means that, roughly speaking, it's about 15 to 16% more efficient to get a banana bank up until round 60 uh, and only go banks, but I will say, dude, this is very, very difficult to do. The amount of micro required to make all of that happen and still collect all of the money at the exact right time at the end of round 60 was unbelievably difficult for me. Uh, one other thing to note, though, is that I did not use Ben. So if you used a Ben, you would actually be a little bit more efficient than that, and that might actually help you in the long run as well. But there's one other way that we can do this. We don't just build one type of banana farm. We build a conglomerate of different types of banana farms. So my main goal here is using what I think are some of the most efficient banana farms to start off. Switching into a couple of the third tier banana farms, which seem to be a little bit more efficient later on. Uh, uh, third tier bottom path banana farms, which are more efficient later on. And then eventually switching into banks when I get enough money to actually get money and deposit those banks without doing anything too ridiculous with the amount of micro required. I want to see if all of that combined together will make us the most amount of money, or at least more money than the banks by themselves make. And if so, that would be absolutely fantastic. If not, it's going to get really interesting in deciding which banana farms you should use that'll be the best for your scenario. And it's finally time for the end of the video, the final conclusion! That like button better be freaking smushed down like so hard that it's unbelievable because this was insanity. And honestly, my brain hurts right now. Uh, after this much balloons farm calculations, but we're here. We're done. We've done it. After all is said and done, after adding up all the money that every single banana farm has made at the end of round 60, including taking the money out of my banks, including trying to be as efficient as I thought, but using what I thought just logically made the most sense in building farm uh, stuffs in order, we ended up with a whopping $151,415 that is more than Banana Banks alone. Therefore, I'm going to say that the best thing to do is just build banana farms. Whatever you feel like, build banana farms. The most micro out of your banana farms is going to be getting the banks ready. But I think it's really easy to build a bunch of other banana farms in the process, build two or three banana farms, uh, banana banks, and just deposit the money and collect it every four rounds, keeping them all equal and the same, and making it easy on you, rather than deciding, oh, I need to put, you know, 47.50 in this one, but then, you know, I ran out of money for this next one, and then, oh crap, I can only deposit 6.51, and then I have to try to get them all organized and everything. I still think I didn't even do a perfect job. I forgot to collect the bank money one time, and I still ended up with this ridiculous amount of money. So... After all is said and done, build what banana farm you like, but realistically, building two zero banana farms into something that you enjoy, whether it's bottom path, third tiers, or banks, is probably your best bet. Banks are still one of the most efficient banana farms, but you need the money to get started to make them be that efficiency. And that's where this weird discrepancy comes in, that people always think that banks are the best, but they're not the best to start off with. They're only the best once you start to have your money. And to get the money going, it's better to build two zero zero banana farms and eventually get these bottom paths. Or, if you've already got this guy, you can build top paths anyways, because they consistently make you money. So, I'm going to say, banks are the best farm. I'm going to go with Myth Busted. I don't think that banks are truly the best farm. I think they've all got their uses and they all have to do something. But banks still are not necessarily the most efficient banana farm if you build them by themselves. That being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and of course, have a super duper delicious day.